Let me ask you. I will see if I've got any philosophical oh, emergency questions for oh, you. Oh no. Um, Are we running out of time now? No, then? no, we're not running out of time. But I just, I'm just, um, we've got, we've got plenty to go. But people like to hear their emergency questions. Am so. I allowed to say I'm doing a tour and people? Yeah, are well, I was, to going to, I was going to talk about because my agent will say, but I don't know when this comes out. So we'll put it out in time for the tour. Okay, January. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm saying that. I don't know if I'm coming to Norwich though. So you know, maybe I shouldn't say it now. Yeah. Ips, are you going, going to Ipswich? Oh, Lower stuff. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just everywhere around. Well, have they got theatres there now? <laughs> we, we used to play Lower stuff. In a barn, mate. In a barn in Ipswich. The comedy barn. <laughs> we used to do like... Three, Lee and Herring, in the early days, we did like four East Anglian gigs, I would say. We did really? Lower stuff. Okay. Don't, don't forget Great Yarmouth. There was somewhere else we did on the, on the north of East Anglia. Norwich, um, Ipswich sometimes. Yeah, so we was uh, like, you know, we loved it down here. I wish they felt the same about us. I don't know. Um, oh, Jeff. no. I'm a, the last time I did a gig in, in Norfolk... Yeah. Is, this is Norfolk, isn't it? <laughs> well... <laughs> You're doing so well with That's the local knowledge, Jeff. I don't Jeff. know, <laughs> oh, let me, I know exactly what happened. I don't know where it was. It was like a, it was like a small town, well, a village even, a pub, like a village pub. There's a lot of these gigs now in village pubs, which are really good. And I'll tell you how long ago it was, sat-navs were quite new and we still didn't trust them. Does anyone remember when we didn't? <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. So I, um, it's very easy to get lost in Norfolk. Is it fair? Am I fair? There's not a lot of big motorways. You, you go off and you're just... So I got, I got to the venue and I said to the other comedian, I'm a bit worried about getting out and getting back on the motorway. He went, don't worry, I've got a sat nav. I went, oh. He went, no, no, they're great. He said, I'll meet you outside, follow me, and I, I will lead you back onto the motorway. So I waited outside, it was raining. He turned up, he came up close, he went like that through the window of his car. And he drove off and I followed him and it, we just seemed to be getting further and further into the countryside. <laughs> and I thought, oh, it's the sat-nav. You know, I thought these sat-navs, it's the devil's work. And then he, he drove off to some sort of country lane that led up to a building. I thought, this cannot be right. So he pulled up and stopped. When he got out, it wasn't the bloke that I was supposed to be. <laughs> yeah. Just... It, 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 was, it must have been in the audience, you know. <laughs> and, and it was dark and it was raining. Because he went like that, I thought, OK, all systems go, you know that? <laughs> go, go, go! I mean, the fact that it was a Land Rover should have been they a bit of a clue. Comedian. But in, what, what happened to me, when, I, when he got out, I thought, hold on, this isn't a bloke, and he must know I'm following him. I really got out of there quick. Because you know what these people are like, they've all got shotguns in their barn. <laughs> it would be terrifying, if, especially with you following yeah, him. Yeah, well, yeah, maybe. It, it, was a, it was a really weird one, that was. It was. I didn't even heckle this guy's coming for me. I had to find my me. way back and everything, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so tell us about the tour. Let's talk about the tour first. Okay. So uh, it's, it, is this, it's, uh, it's uh, called the Smart Casual Tour, right? It's called Smart Casual. Yeah. Just because that's, yeah, I mean, that's just quite, I mean, it, it's one good, of my good. jokes is about looking smart casual. Yeah. Um, and, and what we're doing is we're doing 20 dates up till April, then we're not doing anything for the summer, and then we're going again <coughs> from September. Right. All over the country, but I, I don't know why, I shouldn't have brought that up because I don't think we're doing Norwich. And You'll do I feel eventually. bad now. They don't but, care. Okay. <laughs> but this is a whole new venture for me because I've yeah. never, ever gone on a tour where it's me, you know? Yeah. I'm just always been... I'm a, I'm a comedy club guy. Yeah. Um, so it's, it's quite exciting. I'm going to have a support act yeah. as well. So I'm really excited about it, actually. Yeah, it's, it's, it, it, you know, it's great. I, I love the way that, that the internet is making different stars out of people. Yeah. And, you know, and, and, you know, so you can bypass that. You know, because I think... Weirdly, it is sort of strange that um, you know, with all the with all diversity and, and and things improving a lot, you know, in in lots of ways, I think for women and for ethnic sure. acts, that I think there's a still a class bias. I think it's for you know, although there are some big working class comedians. Yeah, I, I think class or an, an underprivilege. Yeah, you know, it doesn't get mentioned in the debates about diversity, no. and um, often. You know, there's a there's a big uh, movement in stand-up comedy to be inclusive and to be diverse, and I totally embrace that and get that. But no one ever mentions poor comedians like me no. who have <laughs> the fucking bailiff knocking on their door. Uh, and I think that's a good point. Actually. It is a good point. And yeah. I think I was thinking about what was interesting about 
the, the, uh, the late 80s and early 90s was you would get a broad range of different... It wasn't very diverse in terms... There weren't many women and there weren't many ethnic actors. Yeah. But there was a broad range of jobs, right? So, like, you would do a gig... There'd be someone from the docks, there'd be Parrot from Glasgow, and there'd be I Ivor see. Dembino, who yes, was a lawyer. Course, yeah. You know, and there'd be all sorts of different jobs. But and, and then it became very much like... And I may be partly to blame for this. <laughs> university-educated prick. It did. <laughs> Uh, it's true. And then it became all that, you know, when me and Stu were on the circuit, there, was, there were definitely were students, sure. but, but there weren't, it was, you felt like we went to Adelaide in 97 or something and the group of comedians sure. went with was, I, I was mean, a diverse a range point. of white men. But, yeah. uh, uh, but it's, still, yeah. it's still partly like that. And interestingly, I think the black comedians are the working class ones now. Yeah. yeah. That's where that's coming from. Yeah. So that's, a, that's an, interesting, an interesting change. It is, but then for you to be able to, you know, to bypass all of the gatekeepers and put your stuff up and well, people find it. Well, that's the great thing it. about the internet, isn't yeah. it? It's a direct relationship between you and your audience. Yeah. There are no gatekeepers. There's no one at, at uh, uh, no one at the BBC or whoever going, you're too old or you're too white yeah. or, 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 or anything. I mean, I never got the Apollo. No. Um, because, uh, well, obviously I'm much too old for the Apollo, aren't I? I so guess. that would have been, you know... Did you do John Maloney's show where he, he did the... the no, 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 I didn't really want to do an age-specific right. thing either. I, I just tried to stay away from that. Yeah. I transcend age. <laughs> well, you sort, of, you sort of do. Yeah. But, they, you know, they, this is... It's going to be really interesting to see... Because, you know, you're saying you're getting recognised in the street all the time. Yeah, I mean, so yeah, you, yeah. So, yeah. you know, I think if you're out on tour, do you, what, what size venues are you playing? What, what have you plumped um, for? How, how, what's this This size? is 300. So yeah, this, with this sort of size yeah. and, and upwards, I think. Some are 200, some are 500. Yeah, it's a good... But we're selling out already. Right. Which is another remarkable thing. It's almost like it's somebody else. When something happens to you suddenly, you think, this is, it's like looking at somebody else having that experience. But once I get on the tour and I'm out there, I'm sure I'll fill my boots and in enjoy it. I think you really you know, will enjoy staying it. Staying in hotels and all <laughs> yeah. that. Yeah. I mean, you know, it's fun the it's fun the first time when you're chicks. 21 years old. It's I'm not really just about the chicks for me now, <laughs> Richard. It's not not about the money anymore. Yeah. Obviously the older lady, nothing sleaze. <laughs> <laughs> the older Jewish lady really is <laughs> whose husband died a few years ago. Left him a big house. Yeah. And a lot of money in the North London area. That's yeah. where I'm gold is green, that sort of thing. That's what you're aiming for. Vanessa Phelps is who I'm after. Yeah. No. We can sort that no, out. I have to tell you. Can, I, can we talk about this? Yeah, yeah. Is this in your emergency no, questions? Ask about Vanessa Phelps. Yeah. I've always had a thing for Vanessa have Phelps. You, yeah. And uh, <laughs> she's so posh as well, but... But what it is is, um, I've, one of the uh, aspects of this, uh, uh, this, this newfound fame and Instagram following is I'm getting famous people following me. Right. Well, it's certainly famous to me, Louis, Louis Thoreau, oh, right. Great, uh, yeah. um, uh, uh, Davina McCall. Um, uh, who's the black woman that used to do the chat show during the day? Uh, um, the, the Norwich. No, no, no. Trisha. Yeah, her, yeah, she's following me. Yeah. Carol Vorderman sent me a message the other day. Did she? But I'm only We'd using watch out, these watch people. Watch out for Carol Vorderman. It was, it was a, <laughs> it was a little maths question she sent me, but... <laughs> that's how um, she starts it, no, Jeff. No, that's no, no. <laughs> Just checks you're up to the intellectual what standards. They don't know, what they don't know is I'm only using them to get to Vanessa. <laughs> right, OK. <laughs> I know, I That's know. My, I'm playing the long game on Vanessa. I've been, I know Vanessa. I can, I Do you can, know her? I can Do you know her? Yeah, I've done her radio well, show. Well, what I like about Vanessa is she's single now and she's stopped dating younger guys. Okay. So, uh, <laughs> you know, she usually goes out with black guys and I usually go out with black women. But I think it's time she, she dated a, a Jewish <laughs> guy. A Jewish. Well, actually, yeah, half Jew. Anyway, if yeah. it can be such a thing, yeah. Do you think you got... I mean, I, I find, uh, even if there was the opportunity, which there is not, I, I mean, just look at my front row, and uh, uh, I'm too tired after the... I'm, I just go back... I literally go back to the hotel and go to bed now. That's that. Oh, uh, no. I, you'd I'm, still, I'm, you're still... Yeah, game? I would do, yeah. Well, if not that the opportunity has <laughs> ever arisen, but I'm always prepared. Okay. With Luckily, lucky ladies, he's, got, he's got a cab waiting for him outside as soon as this is over. So you're safe. You're safe. <laughs> I think there's something about with, uh, what type of person you are, even if you are not... I mean, you, you're sort of... It's part of how you are, and it might be dormant, um, but you're still... I think it's what you're capable of, you know, so I still leave room 
just in case somebody like Vanessa. If, can you imagine if Vanessa turned up yeah. at my Premier Inn? <laughs> Looking for Lenny Henry. <laughs> <laughs> Write that down. That's a good gag, actually. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>